Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor Channel. My name is Brent, and today we're going to be doing the stock market weekly change for April 22nd through the 26th, 2019. So if you are brand new to the channel, hit that subscribe button below. If you do enjoy videos covering the stock market, dividends, entrepreneurship, and real estate, if you do enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, want to drop some information that you were following this week, drop it in that comment section below. I always read and reply to all your guys' comments. And let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to start off by taking a look at last week's changes for the week. The S&P 500 down 0.08%, basically flat last week, not a whole lot of movement. The Dow Jones was positive last week, up 0.56%. The NASDAQ was almost flat, a little bit higher, up 017 And then my portfolio was up 0.55% last week. So really good across the board there. The Dow Jones and my portfolio were pretty much ahead there by half a percent, whereas the rest of the market there was flat. Now, this week, S&P 500 shot up 1.2%. Very nice. You can see a little bit of a um, slowdown there on Wednesday and Thursday as earnings were mixed out there. And basically, they were just waiting. You know, it's basically flat on the day. 0.22, 0.04, basically flat on the day. Not a whole lot of movement there as more companies were releasing earnings on Wednesday and Thursday. So I think the market just took a bit of a day off there. And then on Friday, we saw it continue higher, now closing at all-time highs here. We can see here that we are at our 52-week range. We are sitting here at all-time highs of $2,939.88 as far as points go here and that puts it at the highest point now we've closed over in the highest point a uh, year today up 17.27 percent the dow jones not quite keeping up with the s p or the nasdaq all hitting you know all-time highs the dow jones this week was punished by what was it triple m got slammed this week we, we covered it i think in an earlier video i know i recorded a video on triple m and outro i'm not sure if i released it or not but here on the week, Dow Jones basically flat. Triple M out there, I believe. Uh, Altria, I'm not sure if Altria is part of the Dow 30 or not. But I know there was a lot of mixed negativity out there. So the Dow Jones basically ended up flat on the week, down 0.06% year today. This is in the fourth place, up 13.79% overall. The NASDAQ here closing at all-time highs. Here we are with 8,146 points there. Closing at all-time highs up year to date, 22.77%. Again, we had that day off. You know, markets closed on Tuesday. We had a lot of big companies putting out earnings on Wednesday and Thursday. You can see the markets basically just kind of trended sideways, kind of uh, consolidating there and kind of deciding what it's going to do. It gapped down on Friday morning at close and then ended up at high so we actually closed that all-time highs five-day change this nasdaq is the winner here up 1.85 percent on the week and we have our second place here the russell 2000 again uh, this one's a little bit mixed i believe that you know the dollar is very strong right now i believe a lot of these national companies are going to be pushing hard here in the upcoming weeks or months as these national stocks are going to be able to get revenue and income and currently the dollar is sitting at some all-time highs here this thing's the dollar is at 9805 i believe it's really going to help out some of these national stocks as they make most of their money here within the economy and with that strong dollar they're just you know it's very strong for them so five day change second place here one 0.66% year to date. This is currently in second place of the indexes, up 18.04. Now, stock futures looking pretty flat or negative right now. We had a lot of movement here on Friday, and we have the S&P and NASDAQ closing at some all-time highs. So why it would be bizarre for the Fed to cut rates now. So the economy, you know, they're not going to be cutting rates. Why does President Trump is going out there and wanting the Federal Reserve to cut rates to enable quantitative easing? I don't believe that's going to be the case here going forward. I believe we're going to have flat rates for the remainder of the year. I don't believe we're going to have any sort of cuts. We may or may not have one towards the end of the year as far as a increase there of a quarter percent, but we shall see how this plays out. So, uh, we've had a lot of people out there believing that the market's going to recover here, uh, continue chugging higher anyway. So 
we shall see how that all plays out. So currently, some of the laggards here in the after hours, I hold ticker symbol RES. This is an oil company here, down 4.49% in the after hours. That's a hit for me. I only have one share of them. I was kind of playing around with this one. It went up to almost, actually, I believe it broke 13 bucks for a while. You can see here, I bought it. I'm not sure why I bought it, like $9 and some change, almost 10 Wrote it up almost to 13 It was a nice gain there for a bit. General Electric here, 957 basically flat there in the after hours. I don't see a whole lot of movement here in the after hours. AT&T there, I don't see a whole lot of financials and tech. I saw Microsoft there down slightly here in the after hours. No biggie there. They were hitting some all-time highs this week. Morgan Stanley, Pfizer, Intel. So Intel's kind of bouncing back after their hit this week. They put out some earnings there. They got them slammed. So here we have the S&P 500 on the one-day performance. You can see Amazon out there. They came out this week with earnings saying that they're going to be spending a whole lot of money, but they're making a whole lot of money as well. So Amazon up 2.54 percent on this uh, this on Friday alone. So we can see here healthcare is kind of bouncing back here. Apple down 0.48 percent. If you watch my video on Thursday, I went over. I sold out of my Apple positions over on my Merrow Edge IRA account. Completely sold out of them. Oh, uh, what was it? 30? No. 44 shares, somewhere around there. I forgot how many shares I held of Apple right now. But I completely sold out of it at 208. It has came back a little bit. And I posted over on Facebook my re-entry points and my thought process of why I want to re-enter, how I see the upcoming earnings play out. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely go out to my Facebook page, Financial Investor 101, and check it out. The rest of the market, financials moving higher, healthcare moving higher, and technology semiconductors moving higher. So overall, the market is looking very nice going forward if we look at the one week performance there we are we can see a couple of the weakness over here in the semiconductors and intel anyways uh intel down 10.36 percent for the week we have nvidia coming out on earnings next week so a lot of investors are taking a look at intel as it came down 10 percent here this week but they're looking and waiting for NVIDIA, which is supposed to report next week. If NVIDIA comes out and says that semiconductors are pretty weak going forward, they lower guidance, then they believe that Intel may still have some more room to fall. So that is something to maybe either if you're buying into Intel or planning to buy into Intel, you may or may not see a further decrease there in the upcoming weeks. We have AT&T and Verizon coming down there, telecommunications down on the week a little over a 4% there on AT&T and Verizon down 2.52%. Financials continue to move higher. Look at that recovery over in the healthcare. We have United Health up nearly 7%, Avi up 2.75, Johnson and Johnson up 2. Johnson and Johnson never really got hit that hard. And for them to put on 2% this week, that's an amazing recovery there. Eli Lilly 4.05. So Really good. You can look, check out Facebook over here. 7.41%. That is an amazing recovery down from those 130s now to over 190 bucks. I know, um, I don't, I don't know. Seven, seven, I believe. He, he has another YouTube channel. He made a review here on Facebook and whether it's a buy, sell, or a hold. And he had a pretty good uh, video covering that. Google Alphabet Inc. up 2.9 for the week and Microsoft up 5.29% on the week, positive, hitting some all-time highs. Apple down here. Oh, wait, we already covered Apple a little bit there. So they did, they did start to pull off uh, their uh, recovery there. They hit 208 and some change before falling back into that 204, and they fell down in the after hours a bit. So semiconductors here. This is showing semiconductors over, oh, I'm sorry, this is the financials. Financials, we already saw that financials over here on the left-hand side. Pretty much all across the board, all financials are positive. We did see Citigroup there down slightly, but no biggie. Overall, financials up 1.32%. Here we are, semiconductors. This is what I was talking about. Intel, NVIDIA, and a few others were out there kind of bringing down this ETF here. XSD down 0.56%. Overall, year to date up 33.65%. Home builders down for the week 1.46%. Not a whole lot of news out there. They're saying that uh, home sales are slowing down. Offers are slowing down. Mortgage originations are slowing down. 
you know, less people are going out there and beginning to refinance or take out loans. Uh, also, 90 days on vehicles. They're saying that uh, the number that, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there right now as far as not only home builders, but also credit cards and cars. So kind of interesting how that all plays a part. But they have been chugging along for the last few months here. We can see here home builders uh, put on almost, you know, 4.6% on February. 0.47% in March, up 5% in April. They're taking a bit of a cool off. That's completely fine. We'll see how they recover. Oil took a big hit this week. Again, I hold ticker symbol RES, which I believe is my only oil stock in here. It's kind of one of those random ones. But oil on Wednesday and Thursday dropped huge. So Wednesday down 0.8%. Thursday 1.1% and Friday down 3.33%. Five day change down 1.73%. Year to date up 35.51. Very nice recovery. This is one of those weeks here where oil just decided to kind of continue its downtrend here. We can see that they kind of hit uh, much. That's not the high here for the 52 week. If we look at the one-year performance here, 52-week, we can see that oil was up at 16 bucks. So here, really just about midway back to recovery point, and they've kind of just kind of uh, took it a break there. We already saw the dollar earlier. Dollar is higher on the week. It closed uh, on the week last week at 97 and 38. Currently 98.05, one of the highest points I've seen the dollar in quite a while. If we take a look at this overall, look at this 52-week highs here for the dollar three-year. Not quite as high back as in 2013 through 16. It peaked out at a little over 100, and almost 103 bucks. There has fallen, and we're seeing that the dollar is slowly creeping up. Silver and gold both positive this week. Silver up 0.28 percent. Not a whole lot that I know as far as what's driving price. Besides, you know, investors continuing to buy once it does drop below that 14 dollar price. Investors are jumping into it. We can see here it's basically flat on. Thursday, positive on Friday. Gold also positive this week, 0.83%. Overall, flat on Monday, continued kind of just up, up, in a way. <laughs> and bonds. Uh, bonds, I'm actually, inter you know, I was actually a little bit interested in checking out bonds. I've been doing a little bit of research, looking into it. I don't have any bonds in my portfolio with their expense ratios, the return over the past year. If you move your money into a high yield savings account, if you move your money into a bond account, we can see here that the one year performance is up 2.69%. Once you take into account the expense ratios, uh, the fees associated with buying and selling these specific ETFs on the market, depending on what broker you're in, does it overall beat if you had just invested in, say, a 2.35% high yield savings account or a 2.3, you know, uh, no penalty CD or so on. So uh, just kind of looking at the performances there. And mortgage rates up, again, two basis points. Last week it was up six basis points. We're seeing some mortgage rates continuing to climb higher as individuals out there, you know, <laughs> Hopefully you guys took advantage of the mortgages. I, I know I refinanced my duplex. I'm going through the process. I have my appraisal coming up on the 9th, I believe, on a Monday. Not next Monday. It's the 6th. So it's the 6th of May. I'll be out getting my appraisal done. So earnings coming up. I did not post it for this week yet. That's something I'll be posting here soon. I made my Monday buy video. I went out there and purchased the healthcare sector. Healthcare sector has been getting slammed. I went out there and purchased Avvi, Medtronic, and Walgreens. So if we take a look here at the total 500, we'll see Avvi up 2.75 for the week. We should see Medtronic. Oh, look at this. Walgreens continuing to fall further, 3.26. But Medtronic on the week up 3.72%. I don't believe uh, Walgreens has had a positive week here in a while. It's kind of interesting. And we increased our dividends by $4.19 to now. The Roth IRA is up to $472.33. I saw this interesting, just not here internally within the states. This is an external uh, thing, but 4% annual percent yield. So it's outside of the states, not an American. I thought that was easy, uh, fun. 
uh, who can relate to having a whole, you know, you have a whole bunch of gross pay, and then once it's completely out, all finished, and you actually get all your taxes, deduction, uh, you know, 401k, everything removed out of it, that's your complete net pay taken out. Now, I thought this was an interesting property. This is one that I was looking at. Uh, in the area that I'm invested in, this one had sold back in 2006 for 153,000. They have it listed now at 49,000. You can see the conditions of inside the home. I actually found it on auction right now. It's up for auction at $17,000. It's what it's going to be auctioned for. When I was taking a look at the photos, it looks like, you know, it does need a lot of work on the exterior, on the interior. It looks like they may have opened the walls and looked at the electric and just decided, you know what, this is too big of a project for us. They're going to go ahead and try and bail it out. So it was an auction REO home. Uh, I updated my application, the simple dividend calculator. Give it a very nice, clean look here as far as the intro, the about, the actual long run. It's not blaring green anymore. Markets recovering higher here. <laughs> Healthcare score. Healthcare Lopolis. So last week, Bernie came out, knocked down the healthcare overall. We can see the healthcare continue to move higher on the week. I put a lot of stuff out over on Facebook this week. I made a sort of a spec uh, portfolio of six spec stocks, I believe, over an M1. I could only add five of these. So we can see here, I added uh, Vice Intertechnology, Urban Outfitter, Tilly Inc., Foot Locker, and Control for Corporation. So these are kind of an interesting little bunch. You can see the performance on them is not very good. They're just kind of a spec stock. This is why I'm not a spec investor. You know, <laughs> I go for dividends or stocks that I know will have some sort of growth. So Philip Morris International, uh, Philip Morris at um, Altria, they got knocked down. Basically the exact same thing here. So Oh, this one is because they came out saying that they're going to be selling life insurance with discounts for ex-smokers. I thought that was really interesting for Philip Morris to come out there. I made a video. I posted it over on Instagram. I don't believe I made one for YouTube, so I may make one for YouTube and post that out over the new updates. I made my sell of Apple. So here's my sale of Apple. I put in a limit at selling at 208, and it was... 45 yeah 45 shares of apple getting sold out there here's my reasoning for it i went over a whole video going over why i decided to sell apple the pros the cons the whole reason behind it uh, we had some big names there in the after hours on the 24th that was on wednesday after hours you saw some big names facebook up 7.71 microsoft 4.65 kimberly clark 6 centrally 6.9 kimberly clark and centrally could not hold on to it they lost it there on thursday triple m my consensus of triple m's earnings guiding forward is it a value buy is it not a value buy you're basically one night, it was offering a 2.62% starting yield. The next day, it was offering a 3% starting yield. Great long-term company. Has grown and paid out dividends for the past 60-plus years or 60 years and going. Johnson & Johnson increased their dividends going forward. Iron, Iron, uh, Iron Mountain. Not a company I'm very familiar with, but I know a lot of dividend investors are checking this one out. I went ahead and posted this. That it looks like a very risky play. You're looking at a company that has less than 10 years of dividend growth. Payout ratio over 100% at 115.3%. High dividend yield at 7.49 may not be sustainable going forward. That could be the reason why it fell from nearly $36 to 32 So not... You know, I don't look at it as a value opportunity. It looks like more it's correcting to its fair value. Altria there. I went over Altria. 10 years of dividend growth. Payout under. Uh, it's at 80% currently, but actually went over their current. Uh, yesterday's yield is offering 5.85. Today's yield as Altria fell down, now offering a 6.21%. I did their current estimates for 2019. Put it at an average of 421. That puts their payout ratio at 76%. So it's looking like a pretty good opportunity if you guys are out there and interested in Altria. And I thought this was kind of a little funny thing. We were talking about, uh, you know, what sort of mistakes or what sort of, ex you know, uh, your experience, how how that kind of, you know, I don't know, was, I forgot what the gag was, but I created that a little there. Uh, talking about Tesla, I thought this was funny. I kind of put this together earlier. Tesla, 20% down here, just within the same month. 
It's one of those, you know, everyone has one of these companies that, you know, they've all held one. We've all held a stock that has done this, whether it's been growth or it's been dividend. that comes out, it has some bad earnings per share. It has some bad revenue. It drives it down. They guide forward. It happens. Triple M is a really good example of a dividend company that just guided forward and then got slammed 13%. Here's over my whole nerdy notes of Apple, how I believe going forward. You know, my buy entries, I sold with 45 shares. I now have X amount of equity available. I could buy 46 shares, which would give me one, 47, which would give me two, 40, uh, 48 shares, which would give me three additional shares than where I initially sell for. And I could sell my sell price. I went over their past earnings, put down their past earnings, performance. What would I plan on? You know, you can pause it and read through there, but moving higher. <laughs> Uh, Merrill Edge, I ran out of my free Merrill Edge trades. I had over X amount equity in the account. I believe it's 50000 at the time. And that's how you got 30 free trades per month. That I kind of ran out of that, so I requested some more. A little interesting. Kind of see how that kind of plays out. And then this week's performance, as we've already sort of talked about earlier, the S&P 500 up 1.2%. The Dow Jones down 0.06%, the NASDAQ up 1.85%, that winner over there. My portfolio this week up 0.93%. Apple did not play well for the week, plus Triple M, plus Altria, and a few others out there, you know, Walgreens and so on. So my portfolio, I did sell it up Apple at 208, at almost the highs for the week. So that kind of helped my portfolio stay up near that 1%. Otherwise, I would probably be down a lot further had I not sold out of my majority of Apple shares there. So that is all and it I wanted to cover today in today's video. So if you are brand new to the channel, have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. If you did enjoy that video, this video, definitely hit that thumbs up. And if you have any comments at all, want to include some information that you were watching this week, some stocks that you were watching for earnings that did well, that did bad, what stocks are you buying next Monday? Let me know in that comment section below. I always appreciate all your guys' feedback. And that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.